Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom is a 2023 American superhero film based on DC Comics featuring the character Aquaman. Produced by DC Studios, Atomic Monster, The Saffron Company, and Domain Entertainment, and distributed by Warner Brothers Pictures, it is the sequel to Aquaman, 2018, and the 15th and final film in the DC Extended Universe, DCEU. The film was directed by James Wan from a screenplay by David Leslie Johnson McGoldrick and stars Jason Momoa as Arthur Curry, Aquaman, alongside Patrick Wilson, Amber Heard, Yahya Abdul-Mateen II, Randall Park, Dolph Lundgren, Tamwara Morrison, Martin Short, and Nicole Kidman. In the film, Arthur must work with his half-brother Orm, Wilson, to prevent Black Manta, Abdul-Mateen II, from killing his family and using the cursed Black Trident to overheat the world while searching for the lost Seventh Kingdom of the Seas. Momoa pitched a story for an Aquaman sequel during production of the first film. Juan did not want to rush a sequel but agreed in January 2019 to oversee development. Johnson McGoldrick signed on to return as screenwriter a month later, and Juan was confirmed to be returning as director in August 2020. He said the film would expand on Aquaman's worldbuilding, have a more serious tone, and feature themes such as climate change. It is a buddy comedy between Aquaman and Orm, and was inspired by the Silver Age of comic books with a retro science fiction vibe similar to the works of animator Ray Harryhausen and the horror films of the 1960s, specifically Planet of the Vampires, 1965. Juan announced the sequel's title in June 2021, ahead of the start of filming at the end of the month. Filming concluded in January 2022, taking place in the United Kingdom, Hawaii, Los Angeles, and New Jersey, with additional filming in New Zealand. Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom premiered at a fan event at The Grove, Los Angeles on December 19, 2023, and was released in the United States on December 22. The film received generally negative reviews from critics and grossed $434 million worldwide against a production budget of $205-215 million. Plot Four years after becoming King of Atlantis, A. Arthur Curry has married Mara and had a son, Arthur Jr. while splitting his life between land and sea. Meanwhile, David Kane, Black Manta continues to seek revenge against Arthur for his father's death working with marine biologist Stephen Shin to find Atlantean artifacts. When Shin accidentally discovers a cavern in Antarctica, Manta finds a black trident that possesses him, its creator promising to give him the power to destroy Arthur and Atlantis. Five months later, Manta breaks into an orichalcum reserve on Atlantis to steal them to power his Atlantean machines that are of ancient origin, but are of unknown design to modern Atlanteans. They are caught midway and chased by Atlantean forces, with Mera injured in the ensuing battle. Arthur learns that this usage of orichalcum, which emits high quantities of greenhouse gases, has not only raised planetary temperatures and caused extreme weather and ocean acidification, but nearly caused a planetary extinction in the past when used by an ancient Atlantean kingdom. To learn where Manta is hiding, Arthur breaks his half brother, Orm, out of prison, and they visit a pirate haven called the Sunken Citadel meeting Kingfish to learn of Manta's whereabouts. The information they obtain leads them to a volcanic island in the South Pacific, where they battle Manta's forces after getting themselves through flora and fauna mutated by the Orichalcum. There, Orm comes into contact with the Black Trident, which shows him visions of its provenance. Orm learns the Trident was created by Kordax, the brother of King Atlan and ruler of the lost kingdom of Necris. Kordax was imprisoned with blood magic following a failed attempt to usurp the throne. Realizing the blood of any of Atlan's descendants could release Kordax, the pair deduce Manta has kidnapped Arthur Jr. The Atlanteans, with Shin's help, determine that Kordax, prison and the lost kingdom of Necris is located in Antarctica. In Necris, Arthur fights Manta and is almost killed before Mera arrives and saves him. Manta throws the black trident at Mera, but Orm catches it before it strikes her. The spirit of Kordax leaves Manta for Orm, who proceeds to fight Arthur and uses Arthur's blood to free Kordax. Arthur convinces his brother to give up his hatred for him, allowing him to destroy both Kordax and the Black Trident. With Kordax's magic vanishing, Necris starts to collapse. Manta refuses Arthur's help and allows himself to fall into a fissure. 
the Atlanteans and Shin escape to safety and decide that Orm has redeemed himself. They plan to inform Atlantis that Orm died on the condition that he remains hidden, vacating to the surface world. Believing the unification of the underwater kingdoms and the surface world is necessary to prevent further damage to the oceans and planet, Arthur reveals Atlantis' existence through an announcement at the United Nations and declares his intentions of making the kingdom a member state. Cast Jason Momoa as Arthur Curry, Aquaman The half-Atlantean, half-human king of Atlantis who can swim at supersonic speeds and summon and command aquatic life, 10 and is the father of Arthur Jr. with Mara. 11 producer Peter Safran called Arthur the ultimate outsider, explaining he doesn't believe he's part of the surface world or Atlantis and he never felt he belonged in either worlds. 12 director James Wan said the film was a true continuation of the character's story from the first film Aquaman, 2018, explaining that Arthur is forced to juggle his duties as the king of Atlantis with his role as a father while protecting both his family and kingdom. Safran said the heart of the story was that Arthur is a superhero who is both human and a superhuman involved in an epic battle with high stakes. 13 Juan felt including Arthur Jr. In the film was a natural extension of the first film and contrasted Arthur's role as king with the juxtaposition of his domestic responsibilities as a father. 11. Patrick Wilson as Orm Marius Arthur's Atlantean half-brother and the former king of Atlantis who is stripped of his title as the Ocean Master. He is imprisoned in the Sahara Desert by the deserter tribe for assassinating the Fisherman King, with a limited water supply to dampen his powers causing him to bear a gaunt and scraggly appearance. Orm is freed from prison and recruited by Arthur to help find and defeat Black Manta. 13-14-15. Amber Heard as Mara. The Queen of Atlantis and former Princess of Zebel, Arthur's wife and mother of Arthur Jr. and King Nerus' daughter who can control water. 16-17-18 The character is injured early in the film and recovers for much of its events, before joining Aquaman, Orm, and Atlana in their journey to defeat Black Manta. Several of Heard's scenes were cut during reshoots. 19. Yahya Abdul-Mateen II as David Kane, Black Manta. A ruthless pirate and high seas mercenary who uses an Atlantean armored suit and wields the powerful Black Trident, seeking to kill Arthur and his family as revenge for the death of his father. 2021-22 Juan said Black Manta's love for his father and need to avenge his death take a darker turn in the film, with the character becoming more powerful. 13 The director had planned while working on the first film to have Black Manta, who he described as having been a glorified side character return as the main antagonist in its sequel, opting to establish his conflictive relationship with Arthur to give him a bigger role in this film. 23 Black Manta seeks to obtain blood from a descendant of the Atlantean king Atlan to free the Black Trident's creator Kordax from his imprisonment in the lost kingdom of Necris, and commands an army of undead warriors from Necris using the Black Trident which possesses him. 24-25 Juan said Black Manta's suit, which forgoes the all-black power suit from the first film for a design that was remade in all silver and more accurate to the comics version, as well as his ship and technology, were inspired by the aesthetic of the Silver Age Aquaman comics and Ivan Reese's The New 52 comics. 26-15. Randall Park as Dr. Stephen Shin, a marine biologist obsessed with finding Atlantis who works for Black Manta after rescuing him in the first film. 27-18. Dolph Lundgren as Nerus, the king of Zebel and Mera's father. 28 Lundgren had a larger role in the original version of the film which he said was reduced during reshoots. 19. Tamwera Morrison as Thomas Curry, Arthur's father who works as a lighthouse keeper at Amnesty Bay. 29-24. Martin Short as the voice of Kingfish. A gigantic fish and the confident ruler of the sunken citadel, an underwater pirate haven, who Arthur and Orm visit to locate Black Manta. He has a smarmy and cocky voice and behaves like a classical Roman emperor with an extravagant surrounding and lady servants, and is guarded by hammerhead shark bodyguards. 3031. Nicole Kidman as Atlana. Arthur and Orm's mother and the former queen of Atlantis. 32 Atlana's role as Arthur's advisor on how the underwater world works was able to be expanded upon given the absence of Nuitus Volko 
who served in that role in the first film and is revealed to have been killed off-screen due to a plague indirectly caused by Black Manta's actions in this film and humanity's pollution from the land affecting the oceans. 33-34-15 Also appearing are Vincent Regan as Atlan, the first king of Atlantis, replacing Graham McTavish from the first film, 27 Yanni Zhao as Stingray, a loyal member of Black Manta's crew, 27-18 India Moore as Karshan, 27 and Atlantean and the leader of the High Council of the Seven Kingdoms who serves as a political barrier for Arthur by opposing his desire to reveal Atlantis to the human world. The character is not depicted as a shark-like character as she is in the comics, 18-15-35 and Palo ASBK as Kordax, Atlan's brother who was the creator of the cursed Black Trident and the undead king of the Lost Kingdom of Necris, also called the Black City, whose evil spirit possesses Black Manta. This version of Kordax is a composite character of the comics version and Orin, which was the name of Atlan's brother and Aquaman in some iterations of the comics. 36 37 15 Arthur and Mera's son Arthur Jr. who has similar water-based abilities as his parents, 25 is portrayed by various babies including Tyler Berger, Maddox Cruz Porter, River A. Momoea Green, Mikau Keats Green, Bodie McCabe, Elliot Oben Pepra, Lucian Oben Pepra, Arthur Rowe Mayer, and Noah Rowe Mayer. 38. Natalia Safran, wife of producer Peter Safran, makes a cameo appearance as a member of the High Council, while Michael Beach appears uncredited as Black Manta's father Jesse Kane through archive footage from the first film. 39. Also returning from the first film are John Rhys Davies as the voice of the Brine King, 40 as well as the giant seahorse storm, Arthur's steed. 4142 and the Octopus TOPO which stands for Tactical Observation and Pursuit Operative, 43 who is a tactical covert operative for Atlantis that aids Arthur in freeing Orm and on their quest, in addition to playing several instruments, such as the drums. 1744-4515 Juan said TOPO. Who was created through visual effects, was a real character in the film after briefly appearing in the first film with an actor occasionally standing in for T.O.P.O. with a stick puppet for Momoa to act against. 44 The director described the character and Arthur as having a fun slightly antagonistic relationship, while Momoa said T.O.P.O. added a lot of comedy which complemented Arthur being very salty. 45. Production. Development. During the production of Aquaman, 2018, Star Jason Momoa developed a story pitch for a sequel that he gave to Warner Brothers Pictures Group chairman Toby Emmerich and producer Peter Safran. In October 2018, before the film's release, Momoa said he would be more involved in the development of a potential sequel and expected filming to begin in 2019. Director James Wan said there were several storylines that could spin out from Aquaman, with that film introducing seven underwater kingdoms that had yet to be fully explored. 1046 Momoa and his producing partner Brian Mendoza wrote a 50-page treatment for the sequel, which Warner Brothers bought but did not entirely follow, 12 and the actor was paid $15 million for his involvement. 47 Emmerich had enough confidence in box office projections for the film by early December to begin discussing a sequel. 48 By the end of January 2019, when Aquaman was set to become the highest-grossing film based on a single DC Comics character, Warner Brothers was in negotiations with Juan to oversee the development and writing of a sequel with the potential to return as director. Jeff Boucher of Deadline Hollywood noted that Juan had been very protective of sequels to his previous films Insidious, 2010, and The Conjuring, 2013, and was deeply invested in the world-building of Aquaman. Juan had previously compared the world of Aquaman to other fictional worlds such as Middle-Earth, the Star Wars Galaxy, and the Wizarding World. 49. In early February 2019, Warner Brothers hired Noah Gardner and Aidan Fitzgerald to write the script for a horror-tinged Aquaman spin-off film titled The Trench, based on one of the kingdoms introduced in the first film. It was expected to have a smaller budget and not feature the main cast of Aquaman, with Juan and Safran producing. Boris Kitt of The Hollywood Reporter reported then that there had not yet been serious discussions about a direct sequel to Aquaman between the studio, Juan, and Momoa, due to them wanting to have a breather first. 50 But several days later he reported that active development on a sequel was getting underway with the first film's co-writer, and frequent Juan collaborator, 
David Leslie Johnson McGoldrick signing on to write the screenplay. Juan and Safran were producing the sequel, though it was still unclear if Juan would direct it. 51 At the end of February, Warner Brothers scheduled Aquaman 2 for release on December 16, 2022. 52 The next month, Safran explained that he and Juan did not want to rush a sequel, and Warner Brothers had been supportive of that which is why the film's release was scheduled for four years after the first film. He added that they were approaching the Aquaman franchise in a similar way to the Conjuring universe, with spin-offs like The Trench exploring stories about the underwater kingdoms alongside the Mothership films starring Aquaman. Safran said Juan knew the architecture, the armory, the military, the look, the feel, the general vibe of each of the Seven Kingdoms and wanted to explore them all in future projects. 53. James Wan returned as director from the first film after choosing not to rush a sequel 54-53. In July 2019, Wan was set to direct the film Malignant, 2021, before beginning work on Aquaman 2. 55 Patrick Wilson said in November that he had discussed plans for the sequel with Wan and indicated that he would be reprising his role as Orm Marius, Ocean Master from the first film. 56 A month later, Yahya Abdul-Mateen II confirmed that he was returning as David Kane, Black Manta, and was looking to flesh out the character. 20 Johnson McGoldrick stated in March 2020 that the sequel would not be based on a specific comic book, but was taking inspiration from the Aquaman stories of the Silver Age of comic books that featured Black Manta as the villain. 57 Wan was confirmed to be directing the sequel at the virtual DC Fan Dome event in August, when he said it would be more serious than the first film and feature themes that were more relevant to the real world, 54 such as climate change. He said the creatives were not afraid to address it in a big way through the film, and cited the Aquaman character being environmentally conscious in the comic books as someone who fights to keep the ocean clean. He also affirmed that the film would still remain a fun action fantasy movie. 58 Momoa said a scene was featured in the film in which Aquaman addresses the United Nations on climate change, with the actor having also done so at the UN's Ocean Conference. 59 Wan added that it would include more world-building and exploration of the underwater kingdoms, 54 and would feature some horror elements similar to the trench sequence in the first film. 60 Being able to expand on the world-building of the first film was one of the key reasons that Wan chose to direct the sequel along with Johnson McGoldrick's script which Juan felt had a really cool story to bring all these characters back and then growing them in a big way. 61 Safran felt embracing the mythic nature of the Aquaman character and pairing that with the film's world-building and visual storytelling made the film compelling, 13 and he and Momoa both believed the film's humor exceeded that of the first film, 59-42 while Juan said Aquaman was at the center of the film with his charm and humor. 13. Amber Heard debunked rumors in November 2020 that she would not be reprising her role as Mara from the first film following allegations of domestic abuse made against her by her ex-husband Johnny Depp. That month, a petition to have Heard fired from the franchise received more than 1.5 million signatures and came after Warner Brothers. Removed Depp from Fantastic Beasts, The Secrets of Dumbledore, 2022 when allegations made by the son that Depp abused Heard were ruled to be substantially true in a defamation lawsuit filed by Depp against the son. 1662 Safran said they never considered making the film without Heard and would not react to the pure fan pressure of the petition and other social media conversations. 63 However, Heard later stated, during a defamation trial brought against her by Depp over a column in the Washington Post, that they didn't want to include her in the film and that she had to fight to keep her part. She claimed that revisions were made to the script that reduced her role to a very pared-down version, including removing action sequences for her character, and she was unable to renegotiate her option contract that stipulated she would earn $2 million for the sequel, which was double what she made for the first film. 64 65 66 By that point, in May 2022, the petition to have heard removed from the film had received more than 4 million signatures. 64 DC Films President Walter Hamada testified during the trial that the studio did consider recasting Mara, but this was due to concerns over Heard's lack of chemistry with Momoa rather than the abuse allegations. 
He added that it was the studio's philosophy to hold people to their options and not to renegotiate contracts, and said the size of Heard's role had not changed during development of the sequel. 6768 Tatiana Siegel at Variety reported that Heard had been nearly fired from the sequel after the first film's release due to the chemistry concerns, but these plans were abandoned after her ex boyfriend Elon Musk intervened. Siegel also reported that the lack of chemistry narrative had been disputed citing that Heard had performed a chemistry test with Momoa on the first film and had been cast over two other actresses, including Abby Lee. Heard described her experience with Momoa and Juan on the film's set as hostile, which was refuted by a DC spokesperson who called the production positive and collaborative. 7. The defamation trial's jury found that both Heard and Depp defamed each other, with Heard having defamed Depp on three counts and Depp having defamed her on one count. 69 social media responses to the trial heavily favored Depp over Heard, with several memes and videos mocking her testimony. In June 2022, reports emerged that Heard had been fired from the film following the trial, but these were also debunked. 70 Heard ultimately appeared for around 20 minutes in the film, 71 with two of her scenes a fight sequence with Black Manta and a love scene with Momoa reportedly cut during production. Seven several commentators noted upon the film's release that many of Heard's scenes had been removed and that the remaining scenes appeared to be clunky and awkward. 71. Hamada explained during the trial that the film was always intended to be a buddy comedy that focused on the relationship between Aquaman and Orm. 67-68 Safran compared this relationship to that of Nick Nolte and Eddie Murphy's characters in the film 48 Hours. Filming. Principal photography began at Warner Brothers Studios, Leavesden in Watford on June 28, 2021, 2882 using five stages, the studio backlot, and an external tank. 83 filming occurred under the working title Necris, 73 a reference to the lost underwater kingdom of Necris, 73 36 84 85 which debuted in Aquaman 30 from 1966 as an unstable underwater city, also known as the Black City rivaling Atlantis that cannot be in the same location twice and originated from an alien satellite. Commentators felt this working title implied Necris would be featured in the film, 86 73 84 85 which was later confirmed. 36 Juan said designing the lost kingdom of Necris was fun, detailing it as a society with various vehicles and weapons, such as the one-man operated machines called the Octobots that move in and out of water which Orm encounters. He was inspired for the kingdom's design by the Aquaman comics from the Silver Age of comic books in the 1960s and their retro vibe. 42.13 Juan felt Antarctica and its landscape were familiar while remaining largely unvisited by much of the world, which allowed him to explore a heightened version of it in the Lost Kingdom. For the Lost Kingdom, the creatives incorporated ancient Atlantean technology that was more advanced than typical modern technology used by humans and incorporated it in the uniforms and weapons of Black Mantis crew, his colossal submarine, and the Octobots. The kingdom featured a retro sci-fi look similar to what the Silver Age comics in the 1950s believed the future would have looked like, evoking a different age but with a modern spin. 13. Many of the crew members returned from the first film, 7413, including Don Burgess as the cinematographer and Bill Berzeski as production designer, 8774, with the latter serving alongside Sabi Mahala. 2. The special effects and visual effects crew invented new technology and VFX rigs for the underwater scenes in the film so it would be easier for the actors to shoot their scenes, with 100 cameras capturing the performances and action scenes, which was then applied to 3D versions of the actors. This new setup came after Juan found the rigging system used on the first film to be complex and it caused physical pain for the actors with its equipment, and Juan found the new setup to be more versatile and safe. 8889 Juan said the creatives wanted the sequel to provide a more immersive and exciting experience for audiences while expanding the story and characters, and explained that the depiction of Atlantis in the film was expanded upon from the first film by providing the city depths, residential areas, and an area inspired by Times Square, while also exploring some of its politics. Atlantis was also given more color and vibrancy. 13 Safran felt the different look and feel of Atlantis was still anchored in what audiences liked from the first film while still feeling fresh and new, 
highlighting Wan's ability to capture the fantasy and colors of the new worlds being explored. To create the various underwater worlds and creatures, Wan and the creatives transitioned away from the blue screen method used on the first film, and instead used new technology called Eyeline Studio, which saw the actors in circular booths surrounded by 136 cameras, which producer Rob Cowan said changed the creative and practical methods of shooting the film. 13. In August 2021, Wan said the sequel was strongly influenced by the film Planet of the Vampires, 1965, 90 as well as old-school Euro horror and the stop-motion monsters created by animator Ray Harryhausen. He said the film had a very retro look similar to the horror films of the 1960s and featured unsettling mechanical creatures which had an old-school sci-fi and horror feeling, which was connected to Black Manta's role in the film. 91 Brzezki compared the film to Harryhausen's work on the films The 7th Voyage of Sinbad, 1958, and Jason and the Argonauts, 1963 for being a fantastical adventure with a great quest and monsters, 42 such as the Deserter Tribe which are located in the Sahara Desert and evolved into vampiric creatures by relying on blood for moisture, 15 while incorporating issues modern audiences could relate to. 42 Wilson said they pushed the fight scenes and stunts further than the first film in addition to exploring the characters' relationships. He also revealed that the character T.O.P.O. and Octopus playing drums, appears in the film. 92 Wan said that, following the positive reception to T.O.P.O.S. brief appearance in the first film, he and Johnson McGoldrick decided to give the character a significant role in the sequel, 41 and believed the inclusion of T.O.P.O. And other creatures from the Aquaman comics allowed audiences to know they were embracing the character's fictional world. 41. Location shooting took place at Santan Sands Beach, Devon, in early September 2021. 8393 and at Piccadilly in the city of Westminster, London. 83 Later that month, ASBK's casting was confirmed, 94 portraying Kordax, the undead king of the lost kingdom of Necris, 3637 Randall Park was revealed to be returning from the first film as Doctor. Stephen Shin, Vincent Regan had been cast as the ancient King Atlan, replacing Graham McTavish who briefly portrayed the character in the first film. Yanni Zhao was set to portray Stingray, an original character for the film, in her first English-language feature role, and India Moore was revealed to be portraying Karshan in the sequel. 27 After shooting 95% of the film in the United Kingdom, 95 production moved to Hawaii until December 9, 96 for on-location shooting. 97 Filming also occurred in Jersey City, New Jersey that year. 97 Nicole Kidman was confirmed to have reprised her role as Aquaman's mother Atlana shortly after that. 32 Filming then moved to Los Angeles, and officially wrapped on January 12, 2022, in Malibu. 95 Filming was completed on time and under budget, and reportedly needed around a week of reshoots. 7. Post-production Warner Brothers adjusted its release schedule in March 2022 due to the impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic on the workload of visual effects vendors. Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom was moved to March 17, 2023, and The Flash was also moved from 2022 to 2023 to allow time for their visual effects work to be completed, while Shazam! Fury of the Gods was moved up to this film's previous release date because it would be ready for release earlier. 98 Wan said that while he loved the Christmas release timeframe for the film, he was thankful for this delay as it allowed more time for work on the visual effects and the new technology for it, which he called groundbreaking, and said the film would not have made its prior release date. 99 100 He had also been working on his director's cut at this time. 100 Wilson also said that new VFX techniques were used for The Lost Kingdom. 92 In June 2022, the final writing credits were revealed, Johnson McGoldrick received screenplay credit, while the duos of Juan and Johnson McGoldrick, and Momoa and his producing partner Thomas Pa Sibbett received story credit. 101.12. Momoa revealed in July 2022 that Ben Affleck was reprising his DC Extended Universe, DCEU, role of Bruce Wayne, Batman for reshoots on the Warner Brothers backlot in Burbank, California. 102 Aaron Couch of The Hollywood Reporter reported soon after that Michael Keaton had filmed a scene as his version of Bruce Wayne, 
Batman from Tim Burton's Batman, 1989, and Batman Returns, 1992. Keaton's version was set to be introduced to the DCEU in The Flash before that film's release was pushed to after Aquaman and the Lost Kingdoms. The scene reportedly confused audiences during test screenings, and Couch felt this was why Affleck joined the reshoots. 103 The film was tested at this time and received mixed results, which continued after it was recut in mid-2022, prompting a new cut to be made. 7 The next month, after Warner Brothers. Parent company Warner Media merged with Discovery, Inc. to form Warner Brothers Discovery earlier that year. The studio delayed the film to December 25, 2023, to help spread out the marketing and distribution costs for its feature films. 104 This pushed the film's release to after the planned release of The Flash, which meant there was potential for Keaton's version of Batman to appear in the film instead of Affleck's. 105 In October, The Hollywood Reporter reported that Keaton's cameo had potentially been cut. 106 Around that time, Warner Brothers film chairs Michael DeLuca and Pamela Abdi told Juan to reduce the budget for reshoots, as the film's budget had reached $205 million during production. 107 By mid-November, Safran had been fixing the film, after he had become the company CEO of the newly formed DC Studios with James Gunn, 108 who had provided notes on the film by the following month. 109 Momoa said in January 2023 that he had shot scenes with a couple of actors as Batman, but was unsure which would be included in the final cut. 110. In April 2023, the film's release date was moved up five days earlier to December 20, 2023. 111 Between mid-2022 and the start of 2023, two sets of reshoots took place following several test screenings, with DeLuca and Abdi involved in editing the film. After further test screenings in early 2023, Gunn then consulted on the film. 112 Those reshoots concluded right before the 2023 Writers Guild of America strike began that May 7 and the studios approached a third set of reshoots, which increased the film's budget, to occur in New Zealand over five days in mid-June with Momoa and Wilson, and was completed in four days. By then, both Affleck and Keaton were excluded from the latest cut of the film due to Gunn and Safran's plans to reboot the DCEU into their new franchise The DC Universe, DCU. 112 Neither actor appeared in the final version of the film. 113 Following the reshoots, the film's budget ultimately reached $215 million. 7 Around that time, Wan said he had to make some adjustments during production as it had been challenging to keep track of the different versions of the DCEU while remaining mindful of other plans for the franchise, but was fortunate that the Aquaman films were far removed from the rest of the DCEU films and characters. 58 In September, Juan said the film would not be connected to any previous DCEU films as he was uncertain if it was going to be released before or after The Flash. 42 He explained that he had directed a relatively small amount of additional photography, which he described as a routine part of the production process, due to some actors being unavailable during some parts of principal photography. 42 Lundgren later said that the studio decided to reshoot much of the footage to rebuild it with a slightly different storyline resulting in his and Heard's roles being reduced. 1972. In October 2023, the film's release was delayed by two days to December 22, 2023. 114. The following month, Warner Brothers signed a new multi-year co-financing deal with Domain Capital for their theatrical films, including The Lost Kingdom, through that company's $700 million fund for media and entertainment, Domain Entertainment. 3-4 Kirk Morey returned as the editor from the first film, 3774 and Nick Davis served as the visual effects supervisor, having previously worked on The Dark Knight, 2008. 74 Nearly each frame in the film featured visual effects, 100-112 which were provided by Cinesite, DNEG, Industrial Light and Magic, ILM, Moving Picture Company, MPC, Scanline VFX, 115 and Rodeo FX. 116. Music. Main article, Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom, Soundtrack. Rupert Gregson Williams revealed in August 2021 that he was returning to compose the score for the sequel after doing so for the first film and DC's Wonder Woman, 
2017, 117 the song Deep End was performed by X Ambassadors and released as a single on November 17, 2023. 118 the soundtrack album for Gregson Williams's score was released by Water Tower Music on December 22. 119. Marketing. Juan and Wilson teased plans for the film in a panel at the Virtual DC Fan Dome event in August 2020. 54 a year later, at DC Fan Dome 2021, concept art and behind-the-scenes footage from filming were revealed. 21 in February 2022, the first footage from the film was released as part of a teaser for Warner Brothers' 2022 slate of DC films, which also included The Batman, Black Adam, and The Flash, before Aquaman and The Lost Kingdom and The Flash were delayed to 2023 the following month. 12098 Juan promoted the film at Warner Brothers CinemaCon panel in April 2022, showing a recorded message of Momoa as well as some brief footage from the film. 121 He then revealed more concept art for the film when its release date was delayed in August. 105 The first trailer was showcased during Warner Brothers CinemaCon panel in April 2023, showing the bromance between Arthur and Orm among other footage. 122 Steve Weintraub at Collider said the footage looked absolutely massive in scale and featured several action sequences. 22 The first theatrical trailer was released on September 14, 2023. 123 The cast were not able to participate in marketing during the 2023 SAG AFTRA strike, 7 until the strike's conclusion in November. 1 IWC Schaffhausen, in collaboration with Warner Brothers. Pictures released an Aquatimer Perpetual Calendar Digital Date Month diving watch, inspired by the watches worn by Abdul Mateen II and Park in the film. 75. Release. Theatrical. Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom premiered on December 19, 2023, at a fan event screening at The Grove at Farmer's Market in Los Angeles. 124 125 126 This was noted by Boris Kit of The Hollywood Reporter for not having a red carpet event and after party, with Juan and Momoa attending after a series of blue carpet photo calls and small scale fan events in London, Beijing, and Los Angeles. Discovery was trying to spread out marketing and distribution costs, 104 before moving forward to December 20, 111, and then pushed back by two days to December 22. 114. Home Media. Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom was released by Warner Brothers Home Entertainment on digital download on January 23, 2024, 43 on Warner Brothers streaming service Max on February 27, 128 and on Ultra HD Blu-ray, Blu-ray, and DVD on March 12. It includes behind-the-scenes featurettes, as well as the special feature Atlantean Blood is Thicker Than Water which explores Aquaman and Orm's dynamic on both Blu-ray versions, and the original motion comic Aquaman, through fire and water on premium digital versions. 43. Reception. Box Office. Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom grossed $124.5 million in the United States and Canada, and $309.9 million in other territories for a worldwide total of $434.4 million. 8-9 It is the highest-grossing DCEU film since the first Aquaman film, but grossed less than half of that film's box office revenue. 129 Aidan Kelly of Collider estimated that the film needed to earn $305-355 million worldwide to break even, 130 while films Hannah Shaw Williams thought it was unlikely that the film would break even during its theatrical run, even after surpassing a worldwide gross of $400 million. 131. In the United States and Canada, Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom was released alongside Migration, Anyone But You, and The Iron Claw, and was projected to gross around $40 million in its four-day opening weekend. 126. The film earned $13.7 million on its first day, including $4.5 million from Thursday night previews. It went on to have a traditional opening weekend of $27.7 million, the fourth lowest of the DCEU, and the second lowest among those films unaffected by the COVID-19 pandemic. It then made $10.6 million on Christmas Day, for a four-day total of $38.3 million. 132.6 In its second weekend the film made $19.5 million, 
a drop of 30%, finishing second at the box office behind Wonka. 133 The film earned $10.6 million and $5.3 million in the following two weekends, finishing in third and sixth, respectively. 134 135 Critical Response The performances of Jason Momoa, left, and Patrick Wilson, right, received praise from critics 136 137. The film received negative reviews from critics. 138-139 on the review aggregator website Rotten Tomatoes, 34% of 203 critics' reviews are positive, with an average rating of 4.9-10. The website's consensus reads, Jason Momoa remains a capable and committed leading man, but even DC diehards may feel that Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom sticks to familiar waters. 140 Metacritic which uses a weighted average, assigned the film a score of 42 out of 100, based on 43 critics, indicating mixed or average reviews. 141 audiences polled by CinemaScore gave the film an average grade of B on an A plus to F scale, tied with Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice and The Flash for the lowest of the DCEU, while Post Track reported 69% of filmgoers gave it a positive score, with 50% saying they would definitely recommend the film. 132. Initial reviews, described as largely negative, praised the chemistry between Momoa and Wilson, despite the overall disappointment with the film's content and execution. 136-137 Both Peter Bradshaw of The Guardian and The Independent's Claire Lowry provided a one-star rating for the film. Bradshaw compared the humor to Taika Waititi's Marvel films Thor, Ragnarok, 2017, and Thor, Love and Thunder. 2022, and felt Aquaman's role as a father was a derivative trope used as a tired reliability shortcut by Hollywood. He also lamented Randall Park's role in the film, feeling it was entirely wasted, and expressed ambivalent feelings about the cast performances. Meanwhile, Lowry labeled the film as being an entry in the rogues gallery of brainless franchise films, opining that Juan might have incorporated elements from his planned project The Trench into the project. She was surprised the film's theme was about climate change and thought Mara's role was faux feminist and narratively contrived, noting Amber Heard's legal controversies. Furthermore, she also called the set pieces derivative and thought the humor negatively impacted the film's emotional moments. 142 143 Giving a two star review, writer Nicholas Barber of the BBC began by expressing his views that Aquaman's box office revenue was the primary reason for this film's existence. However, he praised the performances of Wilson and Abdul Mateen too while noting that Momoa seems to have been miscast as HE's too earthy to be the king of the sea. Barber also called the relationship between Arthur and Orm Klish D, lamented at the complete waste of Kidman's talent, and opined that while most of Heard's scenes had been edited out, the film's unrelated plot was such that her absence did not matter much. Ultimately, he concluded that the film never attempts anything original or honest and criticized its brutal editing for rushing through every potentially major event in a blur of montages and voiceovers. James Wan, born 26 February 1977, is an Australian filmmaker. He has primarily worked in the horror genre as the co-creator of the Saw and Insidious franchises and the creator of The Conjuring Universe. The lattermost is the highest grossing horror franchise at over $2 billion. Tu Wan is also the founder of film and television production company Atomic Monster. Beginning his career with the Saw franchise, Wan made his feature directorial debut with his first film in 2004. The franchise became commercially successful and grossed more than $1 billion globally. 3 4 Following a period of setbacks, 5 Wan found new success with the Insidious series in which he directed the first film in 2010 and its 2013 sequel. The same year as the second Insidious, Wan directed the first Conjuring film to critical and commercial success. He served as the director of the second installment in 2016 and produced subsequent films in the franchise. Outside of horror, Wan directed Furious 7, 2015, the seventh installment of the Fast and Furious franchise, and the DC Extended Universe superhero films Aquaman, 2018, and its sequel Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom, 2023. 
Both Furious 7 and Aquaman grossed over $1 billion, making Juan the eighth director with two films to reach the milestone. 6. He is the 16th highest grossing director of all time as of 2021, with his films having grossed over $3.7 billion worldwide. 7. 8. Early Life and Education James Wan was born on 26 February 1977 in Kuching, Sarawak, Malaysia to Chinese Malaysian parents. Wan and his family moved to Perth, Western Australia when he was seven. 9. He attended Lake Tuggeranong College in Canberra 1011 before returning to Perth as an adult. Wan relocated from Perth to Melbourne, where he attended RMIT University. He graduated from RMIT with a Bachelor of Arts in Media in 1999. 12. Career. 2004-2006, Debut. Prior to 2003, Wan and his friend, fellow filmmaker Lee wan -El, had begun writing a script for a horror film, citing their dreams and fears as inspiration for its plot. Upon completing the script, Wan and wan -El had wanted to select an excerpt from their script, later to be known as Saw and film it to pitch their film to studios. With the help of Charlie Clauser, who had composed the score for the film, and a few stand-in actors, Juan and Juanel shot the film with a relatively low budget. Juanel also decided to star in the film as Adam Stanhite, one of the film's main protagonists. 13. After the release of the full-length Saw, the film was met with overwhelming success in the box office both domestically and internationally. The film ended up grossing $55 million in America and $48 million in other countries totaling over USON $103 million worldwide. This was over $100 million more than the production budget. 14. This led the studio to green light the sequel Saw 2 and later the rest of the Saw franchise. Since its inception, the Saw films have become the highest grossing horror franchise of all time worldwide in unadjusted dollars. In the United States alone, Saw is the second highest grossing horror franchise, behind only the Friday the 13th films by a margin of $10 million. 1516 Juan directed Saw, 2004, and co wrote Saw 3, 2006. Meanwhile, he and Juan L. have predominantly served as executive producers to the sequels Saw 2, Saw 3, Saw IV, 17 Saw V, Saw V, Saw 3D, Jigsaw. Spiral and Saw X. 2007 2009 Professional Setbacks. Juan at 2007 San Diego Comic Con. In 2007, Juan directed two featured films. The first was the horror film Dead Silence, which was the result of advice from Juan and Juan L's agent at the time. Juan and Juan L have since stated that the film was a negative experience for them. Five Dead Silence featured Australian actor Ryan Quantin and is based on the premise of a legend, whereby the ghost of a ventriloquist, Mary Shaw, removes the tongue of any person who screams in its presence. Rather than a gore movie, Juan described the film as a creepy doll movie. It's in the spirit of those old Twilight Zone episodes or Hammer Horror films. Very old school. 18-19-20 The film grossed over $22 million 21 against a production budget of $20 million. 22 It received negative reviews from critics. 23-24 Wan's second directorial film of 2007 was the vigilante action drama film Death Sentence, a film adapted from the 1975 novel of the same name by Brian Garfield that was written as the sequel to Death Wish. 2526 The film's protagonist, Kevin Bacon, was a father seeking revenge for his murdered son, who was killed by a local gang. Juan L played a minor character as one of the gang members. 2728 Juan described the film as a raw and gritty, 70s styled revenge thriller. It's my art house movie with guns. 18 The films grossed $17 million 29 against a production budget of $20 million. 30 Similar to Wan's previous film, it received negative reviews. 3132 Author Garfield later stated, I think that, except for its ludicrous violence toward the end, the Death Sentence movie does depict its character's decline and the stupidity of vengeful vigilantism, adding, as a story it made the point I wanted it to make. 33. 
Having worked on his previous three films continuously, Juan told the male lifestyle website Crave Online that he was ready for a bit of time off just to chill. But at the same time I'm using this opportunity to write again. 34 In 2008, Juan directed a trailer for the survival horror video game Dead Space. 35 During this time, Juan and Toby Hooper were in talks to revive the Texas Chainsaw Massacre series with a trilogy of films, with both planning to direct although the studio instead made 2013's Texas Chainsaw 3D 36. 2010-2013, Career Resurgence Juan returned to the horror genre with the film Insidious, which premiered at the 2010 Toronto International Film Festival as part of the Midnight Madness program and was sold to Sony Pictures worldwide for a seven-figure sum within four hours of the premiere's conclusion. The film began its American theatrical release in the first weekend of April 2011 and achieved third place at the box office, with an estimated US $13.5 million in ticket sales. 37 Starring Patrick Wilson, Rose Byrne and Barbara Hershey, the film was made independently, as Juan sought complete creative control and also wanted to make a film that was markedly different from the gore that he had become synonymous with due to Saw. Juan stated in an interview, the fact that Insidious was not being run by a committee really afforded me the luxury to make a film with lots of creepy, bizarre moments that a studio might not get. 38 Juan later revealed that he wanted to experiment in other genres, or make films in other genres because I love, Lee and I have, we're not just horror fans. We're film fans. I love action films. I want to do action films. I want to do romantic comedies. I love all this stuff. So, if I find the good material, I'll do it. 37. Wan's next film, The Conjuring, 2013, centered on the real-life exploits of husband and wife Ed and Lorraine Warren, a married couple that investigated paranormal events. 39. The film focused on the couple's most famous case second to the Amityville haunting, in which they investigated a witch's curse on a Rhode Island family farm. In his second collaboration with the pair, Patrick Wilson starred in the film, with him and Vera Farmiga playing the husband and wife respectively. 40 filming commenced in North Carolina, United States, 40 in late February 2012 and New Line Cinema, together with Warner Brothers Pictures, had initially slated the film for a release on 25 January 2013. 4142 A test screening of the film occurred in October 2012 at the New York Comic Con event, where it screened in the IGN Theater, and the audience feedback was overwhelmingly positive. At that stage, Juan had several more weeks before the film was completed. The film was released in July 2013-43 and was a critical 44-45 and commercial success, grossing $319.5 million. 46. After work on The Conjuring was complete, Juan directed a sequel to 2010's Insidious. The film was once again written by Wan's longtime collaborator and close friend, Juan L., and the cast of the original film returned. Filming for the sequel commenced in January 2013 and the film was released on 13 September 2013. The budget for the film had been described as shoestring by one media outlet. Oren Pelly, the creator of the Paranormal Activity franchise, returned as an executive producer. 47 Film District Distributed Insidious, Chapter 2. 48 It received mixed reviews 49.50 but grossed over $161 million worldwide against a budget of $5 million. 51 Juan later admitted that he wasn't as involved in the sequel, adding it would be good to shepherd it and keep it more in track to the version I had when I made the first film so that it doesn't detour too far since he never intended to make a sequel initially. 43. 2014 present, professional expansion, atomic monster and blockbuster films. Juan at the 2018 San Diego Comic Con. In early 2013, Juan entered into negotiations with Universal Pictures to direct the seventh installment to Fast and Furious action franchise after Justin Lin, who directed the previous four sequels, confirmed that he would not continue as director in January 2013. Juan was part of a directorial shortlist alongside Jeff Wadlow, Baltasar Korm Kerr and Harold Zwert. 52 A final confirmation that Juan would direct was revealed in April 2013, 53 with Lynn approving. 54 55 The film, 
Furious 7, was released in April 2015. It became the most commercially successful film in the franchise, grossing over $1.516 billion globally 56 and received positive reviews. 57. Wan later completed a deal to direct The Conjuring 2 as part of a significant long-term deal with New Line Cinema. Head of New Line, Toby Emmerich, explained that Wan is the sole director that the studio signed a deal with, as New Line considers Wan to be a class of one. 58 The film was released on June 10, 2016, to high critical acclaim and commercial success. 59 That same month, Wan launched his own production company, Atomic Monster, at New Line Cinema. With the company, he develops and produces budget films in the science fiction, horror, and comedy genres. Films produced by the label included The Conjuring 2 and Lights Out. 60. Wan later produced Demonic, a Dimension Films horror movie that was scheduled for a December 2014 release, alongside Lee Clay. Wan conceived the idea for the film, which was directed by Will Cannon and features Maria Bello in the lead role. Max LaBella penned the script. The film was eventually released on VOD in August 2017. 61. He then produced Annabelle, a spin-off of The Conjuring that served as a prequel to the 2013 film. The spin-off was profitable, made on a budget of $6.5 million and grossing over $256 million 62 as part of the franchise. He also produced the prequel film Annabelle, Creation, 2017, another Conjuring spin-off horror film, The Nun, 2018, and Annabelle Comes Home, 2019. Juan co-wrote The Nun and Annabelle Comes Home with Gary Doberman. 63. In 2018, Juan directed the DC Extended Universe superhero film Aquaman. 64 65 66 The film grossed over $1.148 billion worldwide, 67 becoming the highest grossing DCEU film as well as the highest grossing film based on a DC Comics character, internationally, surpassing The Dark Knight Rises. 68 In 2019, Juan developed a television series based on the character Swamp Thing for the DC Universe streaming service. 69 On 7 August 2015, Juan signed on to produce New Line Cinema's 2021 Mortal Kombat reboot. 74 years later, the South Australian government's budget included a huge boost to the South Australian Film Corporation, with the Mortal Kombat reboot, as the largest film production in the state's history, set to be a key recipient. 71 In 2021, Juan directed the horror film Malignant, starring Annabelle Wallace and co-produced the film adaptation of the slasher novel There's Someone Inside Your House by Stephanie Perkins, under his Atomic Monster label, alongside Sean Levy's 21 Laps Entertainment for Netflix. 72-73-74 On November 16, 2022, it was announced that WAN's production company Atomic Monster was in talks to merge with Jason Bloom's Blumhouse Productions with the company having a shared first-look deal with Universal Pictures. Both companies would continue to operate as separate labels, with each maintaining its own creative autonomy and brand identity. 75-76-77 Future Projects In February 2018, Juan was confirmed to executive produce the animated adaptation of Stan Sakai's Usagi Yojimbo comic book series. 78 The series will premiere on Netflix and will be a CGI animated show, titled Samurai Rabbit, The Usagi Chronicles. 79 later, The Hollywood Reporter reported that Juan and producers Roy Lee and Larry Sanitsky were developing a film adaptation of the Stephen King novel The Tommyknockers and shopping the package to studios. 80 Deadline later reported that Universal had won the bidding war and acquired the feature film package. Juan will produce the film adaptation under his Atomic Monster label, with an eye to direct. 81. In 2021, Juan Executive produced the television adaptation of I Know What You Did Last Summer for Amazon Prime. 82 In March 2020, Juan was announced to be working with Universal Pictures to produce a modern remake of Frankenstein. 83. Juan is also attached to a television series based on the Italian horror comic series Dylan Dog, which was announced in October 2019. 84 85 86 In December 2022, he stated that the series was still in development, 
and that he was also working with the publishing house to find investors. 87. Juan will produce the horror film Border Patrol with Screen Gems, with Johannes Roberts directing the movie. 88. In October 2023, Disney branded television announced a Gargoyles live action reboot with Juan and Michael Clear, joining the executive producing ranks. 89. Unreleased Projects. In 2009, a Wanel Wan collaborative project, called X Ray, was announced and was described as a new film noir action project, with producer Robbie Brenner also attached to the project. However, as of December 2012, no further developments were reported. 90. It was also announced that an adaptation of Scott O. Brown's graphic novel Nightfall was to be Wan's next film after Death Sentence. The plot involves the events that take place after a criminal is sent to a Texas prison run by vampires. 91. However, nothing materialized and Wan lost the rights to the film. In 2012, Disney was reported to be developing a remake of The Rocketeer 92 and Wan was in talks about directing the film. However, no film ever came to fruition. 93. Similarly, Wan's negotiations to direct an adaption of the 1980s television series MacGyver film never materialized and he pulled out from directing due to scheduling conflicts. 94. Instead, a reboot television series titled MacGyver premiered in September 2016. Juan executive produced the series and directed the pilot episode. 95 Juan was also at one point attached to the director role for a live-action Robotech film for Sony, but was replaced by Andy Muschietti in July 2017. 96-97 A horror-tinged spin-off of Aquaman called The Trench was in development. Juan would have produced while Noah Gardner and Aidan Fitzgerald were signed on to write the script. 98 It was cancelled by April 2021. 99. Personal Life. On 22 June 2019, Juan became engaged to Romanian actress Ingrid Bisu, making the announcement on his Instagram account. 100 They married on 4 November 2019. 101. Filmography. Key. Denotes films that have not yet been released. Film. Year title director writer producer notes. 2000 Stygian Yes Yes No Company directed with Shannon Young, never commercially released. 2004 Saw Yes Story No. 2005 Saw 2 No No E David Leslie Johnson McGoldrick, N. Johnson, is an American screenwriter and producer of film and television. 1 He wrote the horror films Orphan, 2009, The Conjuring 2, 2016 and its sequel The Conjuring, The Devil Made Me Do It, 2021, and the DC Extended Universe films Aquaman, 2018, and its sequel Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom, 2023. Career Johnson began his career as a production assistant on Frank Darabont's The Shawshank Redemption, which was filmed on location in Johnson's hometown of Mansfield, Ohio, at the historic Mansfield Reformatory, where Johnson's great-grandfather had been a prison guard. Johnson spent the next five years as Darabont's assistant, using the opportunity to hone his craft as a screenwriter. He wrote at least two scripts for the cancelled Return of the Thing, a four-hour sequel miniseries to John Carpenter's 1982 cult classic The Thing. The project was ultimately cancelled for unknown reasons. He would further work with Darabont on his television series The Walking Dead and Mob City. Johnson has collaborated several times with filmmaker James Wan, contributing entries in the Conjuring franchise, dramatizations of the real-life cases of Ed and Lorraine Warren, Paranormal Investigators, too, as well as the DC Comics film Aquaman and its sequel. 3-4 He is also set to write a film adaptation of the board game Mice and Mystics. 5 He wrote a sequel to The Flash as well. 6 